Hi, I am Dr. Selvaraj, Professor of Surgery at Malacca Manipal Medical College, Malaysia. I welcome you to my series of surgical teaching video class. These are meant mainly for undergraduate medical students doing the surgical flexip rotation. I am going to use problem oriented case based teaching so that you will have total immersive learning experience. My aim is to produce a more engaging, memorable and unique presentation to all those who are watching this video class. The best way of teaching clinical surgery is bedside teaching. Nothing can replace a real patient. However, the next best alternative is problem oriented case based teaching. I have identified 18 core clinical problems that each and every one of the undergraduate medical students must know. They are acute right lower quadrant pain, acute right upper quadrant pain, acute epigastric pain, acute left lower quadrant pain, dysphagia, abdominal lumps, upper GI hemorrhage, lower GI hemorrhage and obstructive jaundice. All these nine problems are concerned with GI tract. Whereas I have also identified nine other non-GI problems namely the breast lumps, mastalgia and nipple discharge, neck swellings, both thyroid and non-thyroidal swellings, groin swellings, scrotal swellings, limb ischemia both acute and chronic, varicose veins, renal and ureteric colic, hematuria and acute retention of urine. So in this video series I am going to talk mainly I will talk the problem oriented case based teaching. For example in scrotal swelling okay the first video is dedicated entirely for introduction where I will be talking only about the common things. Then in each and each of the other videos I will concentrate the various causes for this scrotal swelling. Namely in scrotal swelling I will be talking about testicular torsion, testicular carcinoma, varicocele, hydrocele and epididymal cyst in each and uh, in uh, separate videos. So in this video I am going to talk about the introduction. So here I am first I am going to talk about the various causes of the scrotal swellings then I will be talking on the applied anatomy of both scrotum and testis then with the help of an algorithm I will guide you how to clinch the correct diagnosis. In the subsequent five uh, videos I, uh, which consists very powerful teaching tools. So number one okay that will contain a classical clinical vignette. So in that uh, cl classical clinical vignette I will guide you how to arrive at the most probable diagnosis. Then I will be talking about this diagnosis in detail and in each episode I will be talking only about one pathology. Then with the help of a mind map I will put all these details in a single page. That is the beauty or importance of the mind map. Then with the help of a tabular column, I will show you how to eliminate all other uh, possible diagnosis. So this tabular column can serve as a ready reckoner to clinch the correct diagnosis. So coming to the causes of total swellings, broadly you can divide it into acute painful conditions and chronic painless conditions. The acute painful conditions are torsion testis, acute epididymo ocaritis and torsion of testicular appendages. The chronic painless conditions are hydrocele, epididymal cyst, spermatocele, chronic epididymo ocaritis, testicular tumor and varicocele. So here you are seeing the various causes of the total swelling in a diagrammatic manner. The first it is the chronic painful conditions. They are torsion testis that is the twisting of the spermatic cord. Then torsion of the testicular appendages. Here you are seeing the inflammation of only the epididymis that is epididymitis. Here you are seeing inflammation of only the 
testis that is orchitis sometimes both these things can occur together that is called epididymo orchitis coming to the chronic painless conditions this can be broadly divided into hard painless condition and soft painless condition in hard painless condition it is tumor of the testis that is the testicular carcinoma then it may be infection of the uh, testis by either syphilis or tuberculosis or there may be collection of blood in the tunica vaginalis that is the hematocyte coming to the soft painless condition it may be hydrocele epididymal cyst or varicocele if the swelling in the scrotum is extending high up into the groin then you should uh, differentiate that from hernia so now let me talk about the anatomy so scrotum is a purse like arrangement for lodgement of the testis on either sides with a midline septum so this scrotum contains testis epididymis vas deferens testicular artery pampiniform plexus of veins artery to the vas lymphatics areola tissue and the coverings the coverings of the testis from outside in they are skin dartos muscle external spermatic fascia cremastic fascia internal spermatic fascia and the two layers of tunica vaginalis the external spermatic fascia is derived from external oblique aponeurosis the cremastic fascia is derived from internal oblique muscle whereas the internal spermatic fascia is derived from transverse abdominis so here we are seeing the anatomy of the scrotum both the anterior and the lateral views this is the testis just above the testis you are seeing the epididymis and this is the spermatic cord along with pampiniform plexus of the veins here also you are seeing the testis this is epididymis and this is the spermatic cord along with the pampiniform plexus of veins here you are seeing the coverings of the scrotum from outside in okay this is skin uh, this is dartos muscle this is external spermatic fascia uh, uh, this is cremastic fascia and this is internal spermatic fascia and this one is the parietal layer of tunica vaginalis and here you are seeing the anatomy of the testis here you are seeing a cut section usually the testis will be surrounded by beneath the tunica vaginalis there will be tunica albuginea this tunica albuginea will will send septa inside that will divide the testis into various lobules and these lobules will be filled up with convoluted seminiferous tubules or coiled seminiferous tubules will be occupying these uh, uh, tubules so so from here it will uh, go into the retate testis and from the retate testis the efferent ductules will go and drain into the epididymis so epididymis is divided into this is the head of the epididymis then the body of the epididymis and the tail of the epididymis then finally this will continue as the vas deferens no if you the functional unit of the testis is the seminiferous tubules if you make a cut section of the seminiferous tubules inside you can see the several stages of the developing sperm namely the spermatogonia primary and secondary spermatocytes spermatids and the matured uh, sperm also so the in germ cell tumors will arise only from these cells and in between these germ cells you can see the sertoli cells that will provide nourishment to this developing uh, sperm outside the seminiferous tubule in the interstitial uh, tissue you can see leydig cells these leydig cells will be secreting the testosterone so now i am going to show you with the help of an algorithm how to clinch the correct diagnosis suppose if you are going to encounter a case of scrotal swellings you have to ask four question namely are you able to get above the swelling then are you able to feel the testis and epididymis separately apart from the swelling whether the swelling is transluminant or not whether the swelling is tender or not suppose you are uh, not able to get above the swelling and the swelling is having a cough impulse it is reducible it is the testis is palpable and it is opaque it is a case of hernia whereas if you are not able to get above the swelling and the swelling is not having any cough impulse it is not reducible testis is not 
palpable separately and it is transluminant, then it is a case of infantile hydrocele. Suppose you are able to get above the swelling and you are able to feel the testis and epididymis separately and the swelling is also transluminant, then it is a case of epididymal cyst. Suppose if the swelling is opaque, then you have to see whether it is tender or not. If it is tender, it is a case of acute epididyma ocardis. If it is not tender, then it may be either a tumor testis or tuberculous epididymis. Suppose if you are not able to feel the testis and epididymis separately and if the swelling is also transluminant, then it is a case of vaginal hydrocele. If it is opaque, then you have to see whether it is tender or not. If it is tender, then it may be tarsal testis, severe epididyma ocardis or acute hematocele. If it is non-tender, probably it may be a chronic hematocele, gamma testis or tumor of the testis. So, I request you to watch my other 5 videos also on scrotal swellings and then only your learning will be complete. Guru in Sanskrit is uh, one who dispels darkness. If I am able to set some light through this series of videos, the purpose of my venture is served. If you like these videos, share with your friends and subscribe for the channel. Thank you very much for watching my introductory video. Bye-bye.